Good evening. I am Ronald Reagan, speaking for General Electric. Tonight, Jack Benny stars on the General Electric Theater. In research, in engineering, in manufacturing skills, at General Electric, progress is our most important product. Have you ever noticed that in every community there are some people whose looks and personalities set them apart from others? They stand out in a crowd, you never forget them. Conversely, there are others so undistinguished in appearance that you meet them and immediately forget them. Such a man is Tom Jones. He's been waiting on this man and woman for over a year now, and they still don't. Well, see for yourselves. Oh, waiter. <laughs> yes, madame. Will you get our waiter, please? I'm your waiter, madame. You? Yes, I brought your husband the broiled Maine lobster medium. And you, madame, are the curry tripe with chutney. Also, during the soup course, I heard you discussing your husband's secretary, a blonde by the name of Nellie Jerkins, who wears bikinis during office hours in the hot weather. Oh, check, please. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Stella. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. 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 Smith, you remember Stella? It's Jones, Tom Jones. <laughs> Mr. Jones, of course. You don't remember either, but Stella should. I'm Tom Jones. I'm a waiter at the Astor. Oh, I never eat there. It's too expensive. Last time I was here for a haircut, we had a date that night. How long ago? Only three months. <laughs> Doesn't go very fast, does it? I'm glad it's holding its own. <laughs> Listen. Don't you remember, Stella? We went to a movie. We saw Gregory Peck. I remember Gregory Peck. <laughs> well, Gregory didn't buy you all that popcorn. Oh, Gregory, I'd buy it. Don't mind, Stella, Mr. Jones. She can't remember faces. Don't apologize, Sam. I'll cover my whole face so that none of it will show. And maybe people will remember me. <laughs> happened all my life. I just happen to have the kind of a face that nobody remembers. Wish I had a face no one remembered. I'd leave home, my wife would never find me. I remember when I was in the Army. They vaccinated me six times for smallpox before they found out they were poking in the same muscle. <laughs> I was with the 23rd Engineers. We had the same top sergeant for three years. And every day, he drilled me with the recruits. I never knew who I was. Some war. A uh, born pigeon. You know, a schlock like this comes along maybe once in a lifetime. <laughs> we must have been living right, huh? Here we got the deal all set, and along comes this backward front man. A natural, a lonely guy, no friends, nobody remembers him. Well, he'll be so glad to have some pals, he, he'll do anything. I don't go for it. We spent a lot of time casing this caper. I'm going to do it myself. We can't trust a guy we don't know. We can't trust that face of yours. They'd know it the minute you entered the bank. Same for Mike. Sit down. Well, what about Louie? He's from out of town. Nobody knows him. With Louie, you've got to give Louie a cut for Louie, don't you understand? With this citizen that Mike's talking about, we keep it all. Tax-free. Yeah, <laughs> and if the bank guards wise up and get itchy fingers, well, that's Tom Jones' funeral. Our only expense is sending flowers. Well, what about Marie and me? It's our funeral, too. we got a stake in this thing. Yeah, how about our trip to Paris? If this joker doesn't do the job right, where are we, back in Brooklyn? Yeah, uh, relax, baby. In a week... You'll be santering down to Shams de Lizzie. I guarantee it. Where did you leave our new partner? The barber shop. The manicure's probably working on his left hand by now. Take him by the right and lead him up here. Right, boss. Goodbye, Sam. Bye. So long, Stella. Goodbye, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Cheap polish. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> excuse, excuse me. Excuse me? Why, you're... You're... I am? Tom. Old Tommy Jones. Yeah, I'm Tom. Old Tommy Jones. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you remember me? Yeah, you're... Uh, uh, Harry Wenzies, your old army buddy. Yeah, Harry Wenzies, my, my old army buddy. Oh, boy, long time no see. Not since uh, we were overseas. Remember the 23rd Engineers? <laughs> I remember you always used to say people never remembered you, and now you don't remember me. Yes, sir. I do. You're, uh, you were with Company... G. Yeah, G. Um, only you were, you were much shorter then. Well, that's because every time you saw me, I was digging a hole. <laughs> That's a good uh, one. How are things going? Smart man like you? Probably big on Wall Street, huh? Well, no. No, you see, I'm in the restaurant business. Own a chain of eateries, huh? Well, no. No, you see, I'm a sort of a waiter in one of them. You? Tom Jones, a waiter? I don't believe it. A man of your class, your distinction should be making it at least 10000 a year. Well, very few waiters make that kind of money. We're going to the Waldorf. When my boss sees you, he'll snap you up just like that. Come on, Tommy. Opportunity is knocking. Oh, wait a minute. The Waldorf? Well, gee, I can't go dressed like this. You see, I'll go home and change clothes. See, I've got a suit at home that I wear only on Sundays. This is Tuesday. Yeah, but 10,000 a year, it seems like Sunday. What, uh, <laughs> what room is he in? He has a suite. 3021. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll see you there in about 20 minutes. Huh? Right. Well, it's sure nice running into an old buddy, huh? Sure is. Well, so long, Harvey. In. Who is calling? Uh, Jones, Tom Jones. You're Tom Jones? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Who is it? Get your reservations for Brooklyn. <laughs> Come on in. The boss is busy right now. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> oh, hello. You can't be... Uh, Jones. Tom Jones. Oh, no. What's the matter? Is she sick? We both are. Something we didn't eat in Paris. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Boss, you can't be serious. Did you get a good look at that guy? It's perfect, he's an idiot's delight. <laughs> All right. Maybe the draw, sir. You're being covered by two men with guns. Sound the alarm and you will be killed. Put $50,000 in this satchel. Terrorist into the point. You expect a bank teller to turn his dough over to a, a face like that? Why, he'll get killed and we'll come up empty. Let me worry about that. Will you call the garage? Get the car out front. You pack up everything. We're sailing tonight. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I want you to meet my boss. Boss? My old army buddy, Tom Jones. Yeah, I'm pleased to meet you, sir. Mr. Jones, I liked you immediately the minute I came in that door. You did? Yes, I make fast decisions. If I like somebody, I like them. And if I don't, well, I just don't like them. <laughs> it's funny, I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. So am I. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't like everybody. But I like you, Mr. Jones. You're different. Well... You know, you're kind of unusual yourself. Why? Well, you remember my name. Don't most people? See, most people don't even remember my face. I mean, people that I've known for years. Except my buddy here. 
Must have divided. He remembered me. <laughs> Lucky for me, he did. <laughs> you know, uh, I understand that you're a waiter, Tom. Oh, you mind if I call you Tom? No, of course not, Mr. Just call me boss. Boss? Yeah, everybody does, especially people that I like. And I like you, Tom. And I like you, too, boss. <laughs> Tom, sit down here. Thank you. Tom, I have a feeling that you're just the man I've been looking for. I like you. And I'd like you to come to work for me. You would? We all would, pal. We all like you. I like all of you. <laughs> I'm glad. So am I. Good. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, say, uh, what, uh, uh, what kind of a business are we in? The uh, banking business. Oh, money. I hear there's a lot of money in money. Yeah, there is. You're in with the right people. Well, you certainly look like the right people to me, all right. We are. I'm going to start you with 12,000 a year. Tw 12,000? Is he my, my buddy said 10. Oh, oh that, that, that's before I'd seen you. You're a 12,000 a year man if I ever saw one. Gee, $12,000 a year. Gosh, that's, that's 10,000 more than I'm making now. <laughs> Counting tips. What do you say, Tom? I'll take it. I'll take the job. Good boy. <laughs> See, it's swell being with such a great gang. Gang? Well, that's slang, you know, gangster talk. I'm always kind of breezy on a new job. But I'm a lot of fun. You know, like a barrel of monkeys. <laughs> you just seen Act One of The Face is Familiar, starring Jack Benny. Each week, our General Electric Progress reporter tells us of some phase of General Electric's contributions to more comfortable living, industrial progress, and national defense. Here is Don Herbert now with another interesting report. Good evening. 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 Do you hear that echo? Well, scientists have been studying echoes for quite some time. One of the things they've learned is how to use them to measure distances, especially underwater. Now, that's the idea behind sonar. Here's what happened. A very high-pitched sound wave is sent out in one direction at a time through the water. When it hits an object, it bounces back. The time it takes the echo to return indicates how far away the object is. Of course, sonar was originally intended for one purpose only, to find enemy submarines. During World War II, wolf packs of enemy submarines left the coast of Europe to sink Allied shipping and to take over complete control of the ocean. But those enemy subs were in for a surprise, for our surface vessels had a weapon all their own. Under the keels of our ships, the sonar units sent out waves of sound and listened to the returning echoes. As soon as an enemy submarine was detected, our destroyers went into action. One of the big reasons why we and our allies were able to overcome the submarine menace of World War II. But sonar service to mankind was just beginning. For instance, it makes possible better harbor and channel maintenance. It's used in dredging and salvage work. It helps warn ships of hidden rocks and sunken vessels or other obstacles. And sonar is even bringing more food to your table. Fishing trawlers are using a form of sonar to locate whole schools of fish. 
and new uses for sonar are turning up all the time. Now, two distinguished scientists contributed key discoveries that led to the sea tube of World War I, which was the forerunner of sonar as we know it today. They were Dr. Coolidge and Dr. Langmuir, both scientists working at the General Electric Research Laboratory. And right now, General Electric Research, Engineering, and Production Facilities are working to improve sonar, to make it more efficient for future use, both as a defense weapon and as an aid to peacetime sailors. This work in sonar is another example of what we mean when we say, at General Electric, progress is our most important product. And here is act two of The Face is Familiar, starring Jack Benny. Tom, you know what to do? Oh, sure, there's nothing to it, boss. Tell me. Well, I, I go in the bank and pick up the payroll for your investment house. Right. Well, how do you do it? Well, I, I give the satchel to the teller. See, and there's a withdrawal slip inside. So he checks it and puts the $50,000 into the satchel. Right. That's all there is to it. Yeah. There's only one thing that bothers me, boss. I told you. Quiet. What bothers you, Tommy? Well, isn't it a kind of a waste for a $12,000 a year man to be just making withdrawals? I mean, you could get an armored truck for that and, and leave me for more important work. I want you to get the feel of big money, Tommy. I don't want your salary to go to your head. Yeah, I, I like the way you think, boss. Thanks, Tommy. Well, it's almost closing time. Now hurry. Gotcha. <laughs> But I was wondering, while I was in the bank, if uh, maybe you'd like some calendars or blotters or something. Oh, no. Just so I get my money and hurry. Hurry. Gotcha. prouder when you're in a hurry, aren't they? Yeah. I'm in a big hurry. I have some friends waiting for me outside. That's nice. I was just wondering, if you weren't in a hurry, would you mind... You no. Know? No. Well, will your, uh, will your transaction take very long? No. Good. Good. You know, this big bag here had me worried. What sort of business are you in? Penny vending machines. <laughs> Those are all pennies? Something wrong with pennies? No, no, of course not. I, I like pennies. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me, will your transaction take long? Oh, no. Glad, because I have some friends waiting outside. Yes, madam? Well, in uh, 1945, my husband opened an account here in his name, Herman Hanover, a savings account. Then in 1949, he transferred it to a checking account. Then we decided to split up that money, and he and I opened a joint savings account in his name, Herman Hanover, and me, Gertrude Hanover. That was in 1951. 
And then we discovered that we hadn't really closed out that first savings account, and it had been transferred to our Christmas Club account, the one in our daughter's name, Cecilia Hanover. So some of our checking accounts got mixed up with our savings funds, and Cecilia's Christmas Club account was... Uh, <laughs> Uh, don't you think it would be better if you if you saw the manager instead of taking up the teller's time? I'll handle this, sir, if you don't mind. Well, I don't mind, except that I'm in a hurry. You see, I have to pick up $50,000. Please, sir, I'll handle this. Madam, would you please take this up with the manager? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Look, madam, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to get to the window, please. At last. Uh, here's the uh, withdrawal slip. I Next did. window, please. Oh. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That's my withdrawal slip. Thank you. <laughs> this is disgusting. Huh? I mean, you'd think a bank this size could afford a few extra tellers. Like one teller, say, for handling pennies, and a teller to handle a Christmas club, and one to handle $50,000 or more. Well, this one to handle savings bonds. I'm trying to make an impression on my new job. Now, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to get $50,000 out of this bank. I mean, you'd think it was their money. <laughs> savings bonds. Are all those savings bonds? Certainly, I'm going to cash them in. What's the matter with you? Ain't you patriotic? But, uh, do you mind if I go first? Now what's wrong? Oh, guard, w would you please uh, keep my place in line? Well, sure. Thank you. I'll be back in just a minute. And if you get to the window, the withdrawal slip is in the satchel. Okay. Thank you. He ain't got the satchel. Hey, did you fellas call me? No, where's the satchel? I, I thought I heard you honking. Why, oh, you stupid. Where's the satchel? I left it with the bank guard. You left the satchel with the bank guard? <laughs> well, I I'm sorry I'm late, boss, but you see, there, there are lines of people and there aren't enough tellers. But don't worry, because the guard is keeping my place in line, and he'll get the money for me. Get back in there fast. Gotcha. <laughs> The bank's closed. Oh, oh, look, the other guard has my satchel. He's holding my place in line. I got to pick up the payroll for the boss. That's, uh, that's him sitting over there in the car. <laughs> okay, come on in. <laughs> Here's the uh, guy's withdrawal slip. Thank you. You're welcome. Here's the withdrawal slip. Now, fill her up. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's the matter? Is there something wrong with the withdrawal slip? You will never get away with it. Now, look, mister. I've been waiting a long time to get to you. Now, the boys are anxious, so put in the money. <laughs> yes, sir. You certainly count fast. I'll tell the boss about you. Thank you. Well, I got it all right. Excuse me. The robbers. The robbers? What did they rob? All right, what's going on here? The bank was just robbed. Uh, I'm the teller. 
And I sent off the alarm just as fast as I could, officer. Well, we'll need you down at the station for routine questioning. Anybody else in the bank at the time of the robbery? I, I was, officer. What's your name? Uh, Jones. Uh, Tom Jones. How much did you see? Well, nothing. I was just inside withdrawing some money for the boss. That's all I know. Oh, that's too bad. Thanks anyway, Mr. Um... Jones. Tom Jones. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the way it happened, uh, the fellow put a satchel in the window with a note demanding $50,000. Hey, that's funny. I had a satchel, and, and I got $50,000, too. Hold it, mister. We're trying to get the facts. Yeah, but for a minute, I thought they were talking about me. You see, I had it. Yeah, <laughs> No, but, officer, it was me. It was you what? Well, you see, the boss and Harvey Windsor used me as a goat. I robbed the bank, and I didn't even know her. Are you kidding? No, uh, tell her. Tell her, look, look at me. Well, why should I? Well, you recognize me, don't you? You remember me. Well, I've never seen you before. Now, wait a minute. What did the guy look like? Well, as close as I can remember, officer, he had a, a fat, round face. No, it was kind of lean and angular. Uh, oh, gosh, it was the most nondescript face I've ever seen. Well, that's pretty nasty. Right? You remember me. From where? From the bank. The door was locked. You opened the door and you let me in. Who is this guy? Says he took the money. But I did. The guy who left the bank with the bag had big brown eyes. No, 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 the blue eyes, the big blue eyes. And a real menacing look. I was smiling all the time. Look at like this. I was smiling all the time I was in there. And he was an older man, maybe 50. I'm 39. <laughs> this guy's just trying to get his picture in the papers. Come on, Fod, beat it before I run you. But officer. Beat it, I said. Well. Oh, I remember now, officer. This guy was about six feet tall, and he had red hair and a long scar on his cheek. And I remember he had kind of little beady eyes. They were set close together, and he kept leering at me. Hello, Stella. Hi. Oh, hello, Mr. Mr. Jones, Tom Jones, remember? Oh, yes, of course. Hello, Mr. Jones. Hey, Tom, did you see this? Here's a hot one. What is it? You caught that gang that held up the bank for $50,000 last month. The main guy slipped through their fingers. The main guy? Yes. And the funny part of it is the gang is willing to talk, but none of them can remember what the fourth guy looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be? Uh, give me a shave. And don't cut my face. I like it. Thanks to Jack Benny for another delightful performance. And thanks to you, ladies and gentlemen, for inviting us into your homes this evening. The people at General Electric hope you will continue to watch our famous stars in these wonderful plays. And I'm sure you'll want to see our next presentation. An unusual story, The Rider on the Pale Horse, with another cast of outstanding players from Hollywood. Until next week, then, good night for General Electric. In the home, on the farm, in the factory, on land, on sea, in the air. At General Electric, progress is our most important product.